Welcome into a special crossover episode between the two teams that should be competing once again for the Central Division. Special crossover episode of Locked on Avalanche and Locked on Stars. A lot to talk about. Let's get to it. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, the intro said Locked On Avalanche, but this is a crossover episode of Locked On Avalanche and Locked On Stars. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. From Locked On Avalanche, I am Chris Maselli, and with me is my co-host, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. And joining us from Locked On Stars is the one and only Joey Erickson. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. It's a pleasure to be uh, on with you boys. I, I had to catch up with Chris for the first time when we uh, we met in the playoffs, but I haven't been yeah. with Kyle yet, so I'm interested to see how this goes. <laughs> it's, it's going to be horrible. Prepare All downhill. Down. All downhill from here. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I mean, it, technically, that the season is uh, uh, is here. We but for us, uh, you know, the real season starts because the Avalanche will play on Wednesday which is the day that this is coming out. Uh, Stars are playing Thursday, right, mm-hmm. against yes. Nashville. Yeah, yeah. And so, I'm uh, I, I'm really looking forward to to that one. And uh, a new look Nashville team, uh, of yes. course, with March or so and Stamkos. And uh, the old backup goaltender from the Stars is there now with Scott Wedgwood. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm really intrigued. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that that rivalry kind of reignites. You know, we had the uh, playoff series a few years ago and then the winter classic of course and now that nashville's got some new characters in there maybe it'll bring back some life to the to the season series and it's in nashville too correct Bridgestone. so mm-hmm. so i know it's just game one but you know with the new team that they got game ones your your, your fir- the first home game is always big for you yeah. know whatever the home team it like just for game one what what do you feel like it, will it will it just you know just get those first few shifts over and it's just business as usual or uh what what's the vibe going into game one in Nashville with that crowd and that new team yeah I think the the first period will have a, a lot of life probably and then the game will just settle down and it will be hockey once again and you have to remember too Matt Duchesne's going back and he's already sort of had his revenge tour um against Nashville but that will certainly uh bring a, a little something to to the matchup and uh hopefully i don't have to hear tim mcgraw too much on thursday night because <laughs> that means <laughs> that means nashville is going to be rolling but you have to feel good um if you're a stars fan uh maverick bork may not be able to go so we're keeping an eye on that looks like wyatt johnston and jason robertson should be good so the stars should be uh should be pretty full strength besides maybe one guy um uh for for thursday night but i i think it'll be uh i think the first 20 minutes will be will be something that that crowd's gonna have to be electrified with just all the mm-hmm. new shiny toys <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's, <clears throat> and it's gonna help that half the league is matt duchene revenge tour so <laughs> yeah, i was exactly. gonna say all his all his exes live outside of Texas. yeah it's, yeah. it's crazy <laughs> but no i was i was curious about the stars because robo didn't play all preseason mm-hmm. like what are you trying to establish like honestly in that first 10 because the Avs, they have the two contracts that are bouncing around with Landis Gog and Nachushkin. You don't know if they're going to come back, return. And we always talk like first 10, first 20, first 30. What's the ideal start for the Dallas Stars in that first 10? What are they trying to prove right now? Yeah, I think they're they're just trying to to prove that there's an attitude, I think, and an expectation to win a Stanley Cup now. And that necessarily wasn't the the uh I, I guess the the motto for for a lot of years <laughs> um and i i think they just want to they want to kind of get on the horse and play dallas stars hockey and, and i guess pete DeBoer hockey right which is you know puck possession uh kill plays um in the defensive zone and, and play a, a ton of offense and w- with robertson I, I don't have a ton of concerns that he's not been in camp the last time he missed camp was he he was holding out for a contract and then he had 109 points <laughs> so mm-hmm. i i don't know if there there's much cause for concern for him just because the type of style he plays he's a goal scorer he's gonna finish and i, I think he's just so good at it um you know uh, I, I don't think missing camp's gonna hurt him all that much but um i think yeah that first 10 minutes will be big and just trying to to prove that once again like they're going to be a team that's 
uh, that's going to be reckoned with for at least this season and for the future with all their young guys coming in. So um, I think if they establish that, they're going to be in good shape. And it, it's even weird talking about the stars in this manner where it's just like they kind of have this swagger and uh, I, I don't want to say cockiness, uh, holding their heads where it's like, yeah, you know, like we are one of the best teams in the NHL and it's okay to say that. And we're, mm-hmm. we're here to prove it like Colorado has been the last few years, but now it's about like, it's time to win a cup, right? <laughs> it's time to yeah. get over that hump after two Western conference finals appearances. And hopefully this is the year to do it. I mean, I have copper bust over there on, on the rundown, but you know, you can talk about that now. And it's kind of in a similar situation <laughs> that the avalanche were in prior to when they finally got over that hump and won it for you guys. Um, it's yeah. You, you've been in the conference finals for the past years. The Avs mm-hmm. can get out of the second round. Um, yeah. And then once they finally, you know, got over that hump, they eventually obviously went on to, to win the cup. But is that, is it that same kind of mentality? Like, does Dallas, like, and, and does Dallas fans just want to get the regular season over with? <laughs> is this just going to be, like, a slog of a regular You know you have a good team. You know you're going to the playoffs. And because we haven't got past where we've gotten the past couple of years, that's where the focus is right now. You know I, what I, I mean? I, yeah, I think you hit the the nail on the head, and that, at, at least that's where I'm at. And maybe that's annoying to, to listeners over yeah. the summer because I feel like I I'm always talking about things with the mindset of the playoffs. Like I'm just mm-hmm. I'm already thinking about the playoffs. Like okay, the Stars need to go out and add a defenseman, a Chris Tanev type acquisition to really solidify this decor so they can be true contenders in the Western Conference or a Stanley Cup. I always uh, am looking looking at the stars through that lens and that can be frustrating, but I'm sure a lot of stars fans subscribe to that as well. They just want to see what happens when April comes around. And uh, I'm really intrigued to see where Dallas sort of, I guess, slots in in the regular season, right? It's just at this point, it's about seeding. (laughs) Like what seed are we going to get? Hopefully you don't run into a Vegas team that was an eight seed last season and they took a big chunk out of you in that first round, right? Um, You got to get a few things to go your way. I mean, every, every Stanley Cup team gets some bounces and they get lucky with some injuries. And sometimes you get some lucky series. And Dallas, unfortunately, had to take on an Avs team that was, you know, loaded for the most part, of course, with Landon Skog out and Nishushkin. That was a huge blow. If, if Nishushkin's there, I mean, it probably goes seven games. Mm-hmm. Uh, or yeah. Maybe Dallas doesn't even make the Western Conference final, to be honest. That's how dominant Val was in those first couple of games. So um, if, if you get, I think it's just all about the type of matchups and hopefully they get some bounces. But I, I think you're exactly right, Chris. Just like, can we get through the 82 games and let, let's see if we can go uh, win this thing? Yeah. And what are we expecting out of Logan Stick over part two? Um, the the is are we getting some more consistency and some more seasoning? Because that was a great story going into last year, and I'm curious on what we're looking at on the next round. Yeah, Stan Coven is a is a player, and I think what what he's going to be really impactful at for for the stars is even if he's not scoring, he's going to make a lot of things happen. Um, I, I've I've sort of have named him like the 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 player you would just absolutely hate to play against and not because he's dirty he's not a brad marchand type but he's small and he just buzzes around out there i I call him a little water bug and he just goes around and he's just like four checking like hell and making defensemen just hate their lives because he's just all over the place and you, you watch him in the preseason and this guy does not need to fight for a job and he's back checking a full 150 feet from his own offensive zone and picking a puck up and taking it off somebody's stick and he's and I'm just like like what is this guy doing like you you almost have to I, I I've also said he's like that player that used to play with or that that teammate used to have where it's just like he's always going 120 percent so you may be taking it easy you got a game tomorrow want to you know you know give give yourself a rest and this guy's just going full force and he's not gonna let uh not let anything get past him and it's just like you, you hate to play against him but it's great to have on on your team, and I, I think he's going to score a ton this year. I really do. I think we're going to get a big tick in abdu- uh, uh, production because um, he did kind of fall off um, in, in that rookie season. I think he gets to play with uh, he'll get to play with uh, Jamie Ben again, and uh, once Maverick Bork is healthy, those two, of course, they just completely tore up the AHL last season. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a bit more consistency, as as you mentioned, Kyle, um, in his offensive game this season. Now that he has what twenty four games under his belt, I think you're going to look at a, a Calder finalist. I don't know if he wins it with you know Celebrini, kind of the the guy to to almost 
I guess it's his to lose, so to speak. But I think he's going to be up there um, as, as a Calder finalist. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think the Avalanche are looking at Dallas and like we – want to replicate that with with the youth movement like the, the yeah. young guys that you've put in just have seemed to be have been aces um and mm -hmm. the abs they, they they're going that route to start the the season um you know they they have likely four guys that they're going to start uh with Callum Ritchie and Malinsky uh Ivan Ivan and Kovalenko and you know some of it's forced because of the Landis Gog yeah. and and Lekin in is out too to start the season. So I think, you know, I'm not saying they're just modeling themselves after the stars. Like I said, they kind of didn't have really have a, a choice in the matter. But past, we were, Kyle and I were talking about this, past Avalanche teams would have just relied on veterans yeah. Yeah. and just get us through. But they're going, they're going a little bit younger. And it's, it's kind of exciting to, and, and, and you know, how is it for you? Is it kind of like similar last year, kind of getting these, these fresh faces that worked out? And it's like, uh, this is exactly what we wanted. Yeah, yeah, it, it's so important too, right? Because during the Jamie Ben Tyler Sagan era, right, which is kind of almost coming to an end right now. I think this is what will really be the last season. Jamie Ben's going to stick around. Uh, General Manager Jim Nill said, if he's the GM, he's gonna he's gonna be a Dallas yeah. star. So I mean, yeah. we can pretty much book it that that he's going to stick around. But you do have this influx uh, in talent, but it. it it, it gives some of your veterans some longer longevity, right? And, of course, the Avs have already got their Stanley Cup with McKinnon and Rantanen um, and McCarr. But you get this influx of young talent, and now it opens your window again. And, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, Dallas did it sort of late with Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. But, you know, I, I guess now or never is, 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 um, is sort of the, the mantra there. Um, but th there was a, a really important shift in the way Dallas started thinking about the way they drafted. And there was an article put out over the summer from the athletic and general manager, Jim Neal came out and said, he's like, after that 16, 17 season, because I mean, Dallas during most of the Jamie Ben Tyler Sagan era was just mediocre hockey, right? You know, they were just kind of hovering over 500 and, and maybe they snuck in and, you know, a lot of teams subscribe to, well, let's just get in and see, but that's not a great way to go about it. And they changed their 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 mindset in drafting too over skill, drafting skill over size. And now you see Maverick Bork, and now you see Logan Stankov. And of course, they they sort of lucked into getting Miro Haskin in um, with a third pick, but he hit obviously. You you traded up to get Jake Ottinger, and they and now all of those players have like hit. And you have another one in Liam Bischel who is this giant yeah, man, what? guy that I can move the puck and he's going to start in the AHL, but man, he looks like he's going to hit at 18th overall. And, and he's got a good foundation. Like, I mean, like it, I just get giddy thinking about it. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, once Bishop comes up, I mean, this is a team that's loaded now. Yeah. Must Wait, be was, nice. it, <laughs> was it literally just pick the best player available or, or, or was it more need or, or a combination of the two? Like, what was the mindset of, of drafting? I think the stars really subscribe to to who their guy is. They they, they don't go away from that. And I think mm -hmm. we saw that in this past draft with Emil Hemming. Um, EJ Emery was there, uh, of course. And the Dallas needs right shot defensemen, right? I mean, everybody needs right shot defensemen right. in a lot of ways. But, you know, Dallas, that would have been, I guess, best player available or need. But they stuck with their gut and they went with Emil Hemming, who's another Finnish guy. I'm sure they had their their due diligence with Yeri Lettinen, a former you know Stars legend. Uh, um, I, I think they just kind of subscribe to that, or it's just like you know this is our guy and we're going to stick with him no matter what, no matter what really happens. And you know Wyatt Johnston was a pick that that COVID was weird for a, you know a lot of teams. And I mean I think Johnston played like seven games or something like that. Mm. Um, but but Dallas just liked him. There was a scout that loved him and um, they took him and that's obviously paid out. And I think he's going to be the next superstar here in Dallas. Uh, I think he, he's going to be that, that, that type of caliber player. And I, I yeah, I, I would say it's just more of just kind of sticking with your gut. It, it's not necessarily yeah. best player need. It's just like, you know, Stan Cove in a second round, uh, like he's a smaller guy and a lot of teams probably were turned off by that. Cause that's just, you know, it, it's, it's <laughs> DMs find it hard to, you know, not want to give the big six, six guy, just all the money a lot of times. And you see it in free agency mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot, those big guys get paid. Um, and then, yeah, but I, th I think Dallas just sticking with their gut and it's obviously paid off. So uh, good stuff. <laughs> I, wish, I wish my gut was right that many times <laughs> in a row. So, um, all right, let's get a break in uh, a couple more questions for you. And then I'm sure you have some questions for us uh, for yeah. the abs going into 
next year. All right, we'll get to all that coming up next. All right, let's hear it from Game Time and the Game Time app. It has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. With Game Time Picks, it filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. There's other things that we love about the Game Time app as well. Of course, you have the Game Time Picks, the all in pricing. You can toggle the feature on and it shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. I guess if you're one of those people that like surprise fees, don't toggle that on. But uh, most people want to know what they're looking at is the final price. And you can toggle that feature on. You got your seat views, your lowest price guarantee, or they will credit you 110% of the difference. And the game time ticket coverage and your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time and download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create the account and redeem the code locked on NHL, L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it, Kyle? It's game time. Stop doing that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in later on, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Chris loves it every time yeah. you do that, Kyle. Yeah, there, there's an added. I think I'm starting to see the dynamic now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's an added feature which he's incorporated to that, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you know later. Anyway, um, all right. So yeah, you got the, the Avalanche and the Stars. I think there's still the, the two the two horses at the top of this division. Mm-hmm. We'll let. Uh, the predators earn their keep before yes. they we've invite them into this party uh, that we've been kind of, uh, it's just been the two of us for a few years now. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll see. But as far as Dallas goes, I, in my opinion, they're, they're, they're one of the most well-rounded teams in the league. They have very few weaknesses in, in my opinion. So when I ask you this, like, where is the weakness? I don't mean like, where, what are they terrible at? Because I don't yeah. think they're terrible at anything. <laughs> just what's the one little thing that teams could exploit just to maybe get an upper hand on them? Because they're going to be a tough out game in and game out this year. Yeah, no, and I think it's a great question. And something I've, I've really pondered over the last few weeks, because um, obviously July 1st in free agency, it, it wasn't what a lot of stars fans wanted, right. And getting Matt Dumba and Ilya Labushkin. But the, the more I think about it and I take a more bird's eye view, look at really the entire West and even the central um, the, the weakness you would point out is the defense, right. And, and Matt Dumba and Ilya Labushkin, which are really just slotting into your top four. Labushkin's just played over 17 minutes is the most he's ever played in his career a night. Um, and w- w- how is that going to work out? Dumba, of course, ha- has not looked the same like he was in Minnesota, um, but he has played over 20 minutes a-, a night recently with Arizona, and you have to think he's going to get a little better with this situation here in Dallas because there's it's just a better environment, and if he plays alongside Miro Haskinen, I, I think Miro is going to make him look good a, a lot yeah. more often um, than not, but w- when you really take a bird's eye view look at things, you have to think, well, like – like Colorado has a better defense, of course. Um, I, I think Vegas you would put up there um, as a team that still has a very good back end. Uh, Nashville, I think you can make the argument. But Dallas still has Miro Haskinen and Thomas Harley, who are you know really, really nice pieces. And Lindell's been there forever. And I, I think Lindell's a, a very underrated player that I think in a lot of postseason series, teams kind of come out of and be like, yeah, that, that 23 guy's like pretty good. He's not flashy mm-hmm. at all, but – you know, he, he's earned our respect in a lot of ways. Um, the, the, the really, I think the big concern is, is Niels Lundqvist, who's like that sixth defenseman who, um, it, you remember that Colorado series was playing like two shifts a game <laughs> until yeah. Petrovic finally came in. Can, can he finally establish himself as a player that has trust with the coaching staff? Because that's really where he's lacking is Pete DeBoer and his staff just have not trusted him enough to play. So one of my bold predictions is he plays 70 plus games <laughs> with the stars because the most he's played is 60. Um, and uh, I, I don't, I don't even really see, see that happening. So I, I yeah, that, that is the weakness, but it, it's not, it's not egregious, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not like they're falling off a cliff, but they will have some issues there and they're going to have to make up for that um, at some point throughout the season. 
And I, I noticed there was a, a lack of confidence in the defensive pairings in preseason. There was like a lot of shifting and moving in, in the pairings. And it's it's something that showed me that there's not that confidence in what they have. With this Nashville game coming up, do you find them finding overconfidence confidence in these pairings if it is a successful win against Nashville and this is what you commit to going forward? Or is there going to be like fluctuations in this defensive pairings throughout the year? Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of experimentation that seemed to to sort of be the trend th- throughout the preseason. But I think they're going into it knowing what they're going to go with, which I think is a good sign and something that I wanted them to do. Because number one is you have to get Miro on his strong side. And we saw in the preseason, it just opens up so much more for his game. And I know they, they tell us, well, we're not worried about it. Well, you should be because it, it makes him a lot better of a player. It, it really does. And he's already one of the best defensemen in the world. But like you get him on that strong side, then he's on his forehand. He can do so much more. So he's going to play alongside Matt Dumba, I believe. That's going to be your top pair. And then your second pair will be Harley and Labushkin. So they have the lefty-righty matchups they wanted because they brought those two guys in to, to really get some continuity there. And then Lindell and Lundquist. That's the pairing that I think is going to just get – changed around a ton and I think they may be uh, what I I guess I would say I could be I'm going to be concerned about is they have a rough stretch here let's say to open the open the season then they're going to want to go back to Harley and Haskinen which of course is a super duper pairing like those two are dominant together but I would love for them to just let it marinate for a bit and see what they have out of it because they're they are a really good team I don't think they have to worry about you know like an Edmonton situation where they were like were really putrid off the start, <laughs> but mm-hmm. they don't have Connor McDavid to kind of lift them through the, <laughs> yeah. um, lift them through the the regular season. So I don't think they're worried about getting off to such a putrid start where they need to almost go back to what's comfortable. Um, so I, I think it's a good point. Yeah, I, I don't know if they really know, and I think we're going to see a lot of experimentation throughout the year, which I don't necessarily think is is a bad thing, but it really is nice to have continuity throughout a season and they have that up front. Right. And I think they're searching for that on the back end. And that's why they signed guys like Labushkin and Dumba for, you know, two or three years. And yeah, you could certainly argue they overpaid for him, but I think they're like, this is the one spot on the team. We've never been consistent in at least the last like five years. It's like, we're going to finally try to find that. And hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, get our last break in here and we come back. Uh, I, I, Sure, you have some uh, questions and thoughts for us and in, mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in the Avalanche for coming up this for this season. So uh, one more break, come back, and then I also want to get because Kyle and I did our predictions uh, on yesterday's episode. I don't know if you've done them for your your show I yet. I did. So this is okay. Perfect. Yes. So uh, you can fill us in on what your predictions are. So we'll do that next. All right, let's hear from FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return over on FanDuel, which is, of course, America's number one sports book. So when you get that hunch in the middle of the game and you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com where you can get started with $200 in bonus bets. Like I said, that is guaranteed when you place just $5 over at America's number one sports book. Of course, that is FanDuel.com. All right, sir. So uh, let's turn the tide here and uh, you can kind of throw some our way. I know the abs, if if my scrolling skills are still up to par, uh, I don't, I think their first game that they play is late November. So after Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. And, and it, uh, and it's spaced (laughs) out. It's not bad. It's spaced out. They don't just have like all the games win like two, two week period and they're done. Yeah. Hate that. Yes. So uh, this could be a fun season. Who you see in the beginning of the year could be different by the end of the year. So a- absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and when these two teams meet, it's usually fireworks in the regular season. There's always a lot of entertaining games. What usually? I think we, what, did it, we blow like two, three goal leads <laughs> against the yes, man. Or we, we, were... And we tried to in the playoffs a few yeah. times. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good games. Always good games, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess my first question I, I want to ask you about Casey Middlestad. I've always liked his game. And then he comes over to Mint or comes over from, from Buffalo. He comes into to Colorado and he's like, Yeah, now, now, now this guy's this guy can play with people around him. Is he sort of like 
Is he kind of um, your number two center now, kind of rocking along? He's, he's, you know, it's McKinnon, and then you got you got Middlestad kind of kind of running shot because he's a really good player, and I think he gets to show that now um, in Colorado. Yeah. I hope so. I hope he, <laughs> like, he is the two C. They're giving him the keys. Okay, yeah. Uh, Avalanche fans, uh, we've been here before, right, Kyle? With with uh, Alex Newhook, it's a different animal though. Like it, it's not, you know, Middlestad is not uh, Newhook. But yeah, the, the interesting thing with him is they haven't really given him a solid line to play with in the preseason and in yeah. training camp. It's just been kind of like a mix and match because the guys that he's likely going to be playing with are not going to be playing right now with yeah. Valentin Chuskin, maybe Gabe Landeskog, even Arturi Lekkinen. So <laughs> those three guys, you can you know interchange who's going to be on that line. He doesn't get to practice with them. So you're, you're thinking it might be a really young line with him, Kovalenko, wow. and yeah. probably Callum Ritchie to start your second line. But you're right, man. Like, I, I'm expecting a lot from him this year. Um, I just don't think, you know, he's buried in Buffalo for a long time. And now this is how many guys have come to Colorado and just with the culture, with the, the you know, the winning culture um, and being around guys that just expect to win, just get more out of out of a guy. I'm sure, Kyle, you feel... So. No, you're 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 very excited to see what Middlestead can do, especially with an off season and a training camp, and he mm-hmm. can really work with the Avalanche. But like Chris mentioned, like they gave they gave him a new deal, like he's here, he's the two C. Mm. But they gave him this promotion in his office. They're still putting up the walls and a door. Like he's moved mm-hmm. in, he's got comfortable, but he doesn't know what everything looks like around him. And I don't think you're going to see a hundred percent Casey Middlestead till probably that first Dallas game. Yeah. Could be. Wow. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be odd. It's gonna be weird. It's it's just it's almost like unfair to him because yeah. it's like, hey, you're you're our guy. We we haven't had a true two C. You are anointed that guy. And oh, by the way, for the first maybe one or two months, uh, we're just gonna, you know, mix and match a line for you. But I think that'll that'll make him rise to the occasion. And and if he yeah. can really kind of uh make this the, the second line, if it continues to be Kovalenko and Richie, um, if, if he can, can keep them and, 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 and introduce them to the league and, and keep everybody above water. I mean, he, he's, he's going to be a, a superstar in avalanche land to, to do that with, with less or not. I mean, I want to say less, yeah. like they're not good players, but, um, it, it's a tough start for him, but I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah. What is the latest on land to Scott? I feel like I haven't heard much, uh, from, from, uh, from his side of things. Um, it's still, uh, you hear all the right things. Okay. Yeah. Coming out of him. He's progressing. And, he's progressing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. you know what, man? And I believe it because, yeah, yeah. um, if they, they've always said, if there's any other setbacks with this, like they really got to start back at square one. Um, maybe we're past that stage of starting all the way back from square one. I, when they said that, that was shortly after his surgery. Um, and maybe like six months after his surgery. I think we're beyond the, if there's a setback, we got to go to the drawing board. But if there's a setback, it could be another month or two. I don't know. I I don't want to guess what it is, but um, maybe we're past the worst of it, Mm -hmm. I want to say. And they are. They're saying all the right things of he's progressing nicely. Um, What did he say, Kyle, earlier, sooner rather than later of when he should return to action? I think abs fans are kind of expecting uh, a November return. Um, And that would be kind of incredible because you will likely, if that happens, you're getting uh, Landeskog, Nachuskin and Lekkonen all back in November. Yeah. That's you. You're fully loaded. (laughs) I I, I am curious from an outside point of view, I guess if you look at the stars abs postseason series, high in talent, of course the abs match up there. They, they have the better high end talent. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. with one of the top, I mean, really, I got two top five players in the game. You could, I think you could really make that argument. Sure. Is, 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 is the possibly the weakness if, if these two teams met again in the postseason? Is, is it the depth up front? Is that where maybe Dallas had the advantage at? Um, is it goaltending? Cause I, I, I think maybe it's Dallas had extra depth up front. That would be where I would say the stars had the advantage from your point of view. Do you look at, at look at it a different way, it, especially it's different when you're not fully loaded and some of the, the, the outside concerns sure. that have happened, but 
I could tell you if we're looking back at that playoff series and where the matchups went, <clears throat> the absence of Val Nachushkin in the middle of that series popped the balloon for the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the the production you're getting out of Nuke in the first three games, or first two games, and especially off that Winnipeg series, was phenomenal. And mm -hmm. especially off his track record and the, the Seattle exit the year prior, you were building confidence that Nuke was here to stay, and he's done everything. And the exit deflated that team. You could see mm -hmm. it in the body language. You could see it in how that team reacted. If, that game four was like just complete oh, no show, oh unfortunately for them. Like it was terrible news to get. Like it was yeah. just like, oh yeah. Okay. Just yeah. an hour <laughs> before the game. Just yes. an hour before yes. the game. And they found out along with all the Avs fans. And you could feel just that dread mm -hmm. and the disappointment. And that's what turned the series. If you have this series back, I agree with your point earlier. This might be a seven game series. Um, you could break it down every way possible, but the emotions coming off that Winnipeg series were voided with the Chushkin's exit. Yeah, yeah, that that, that was rough. Um, and I don't, I just don't think the defense was up to par. Um, no, in no. in in the playoffs for the Avs, it, it, they kind of struggled, and Georgiev kind of bailed them out a few times, in in the, which was odd because he had a very up and down season. <laughs> It's going to be a, a lot of eyes on him this year, man, to see what he can do. And not only him, his backup in Eustace Anunen. Like, they they really haven't had a, a true backup in a couple of years now um, since uh, Francois yeah. um, retired. So um, he's got to be a, a solid backup. Georgia's really got to stand up. The defense has to, has to improve. Depth-wise, I, I think that could be – hit or miss with them right now. Mm -hmm. Um I I I I like it, but it's one of those things like where they're that's what they that's what the Avalanche are doing right now is just plugging the holes. You have your top guy signed. Yeah. And that's what you want. And then every offseason it's going to be, you know, plugging those depth holes. Do those moves pan out? Mm -hmm. Remains to be seen. We'll find out one in tomorrow or yeah, yeah they were pretty yeah. busy at, at the trade deadline last year you see yeah. that sort of kind of happening again possibly or or with this influx of young talent you think maybe they just sort <laughs> of let it ride of course you can never have too much depth they'll, they'll probably sure. go and add somebody but do you think these young guys that are coming up that you've mentioned the handful like they're they're going to have to sort of step up and 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 you know play some big minutes <laughs> this season mm. Well, <clears throat> the moves last year that were made at the trade deadline were because the pieces they picked up to plug the holes did not work with Ryan oh. Johansson. Like they were, and they got rid of Bo and Byram. Yeah. They, they had to make some moves to make that team competitive for the playoffs that we mentioned earlier that everybody points to. The Avs were preparing for the playoffs. Yeah. This year, with plugging the holes, you also have to take into account the Landeskog and Nachushkin and possibly Lekkinen, how everybody returns to the ice and yeah. win and what you have to do to, again, be a competitive team in the playoffs. So it's going to be, honestly, like we mentioned, the 10 by 10 game stretches. Yeah. That's how this team's going to be evaluated all year long. And how mm -hmm. active they be at the will be at the trade deadline depends on how this team is reacting in those stretches. 100%. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, if you get those guys back, that's like your own little mini trade deadline for right. yourself. And that's right. you, and you don't have to worry about it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Just cap space, I guess. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And if, if you know, worst case scenario, like in, or not like in, Landis Gog, such a player. Is it like oh, an just go oh he's awesome. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if, if Landis Gog can't, can't do it, Mm -hmm. If it he goes out there and he tries, worst case scenario, um, you got you, then you've got to put him on LTIR. That frees up stuff, obviously, for yeah. trade deadlines. So it's a really good question. It's very difficult to answer because yeah. you mm -hmm. don't know what is going to come back. You don't know how the young guys are going to pan out. And like Kyle said, if they do, your trade deadline is a lot different than if they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we will see. We will see. It's <laughs> going to be a, a fun, interesting season for the Avs for sure. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think uh stars and abs, man, they're gonna be battling out again. For, I think so. It just feels that way. <laughs> and like I said, heading into the last break, uh, we, we did our predictions. Okay. You said you did yours. I didn't listen to your show. So what 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 is, are are you going? Are you the type that you're putting the stars in, or do you feel like if you did, you're gonna jinx them? No, I so so last season I I just I made the prediction that they were going to get to the Western Conference final. Mm -hmm. That was my prediction. I didn't have the cojones to do it any further than that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this year, I I I went out and I said I said they they're going to win the Stanley Cup this year. I, I, I'm going for it. Um, that that that's my my prediction. I think they repeat as Central champs. Uh, I I think they'll do that. I think Edmonton wins the West. I, I don't think they win the West. Uh, um, again this season, the regular season. But yeah, I'm just going to go on a limb. I, I I think Dallas has it this year. Uh, they just. They have the makeup of a Stanley Cup yeah. champion. They've gone through the heartbreak, which some teams you kind of have to do, and the Avs sort of went through that. Yeah. Um, the Stars were doing it at different stages, but um, I just I feel like yeah, you get Sagan and, and Ben like maybe one last two raw, and then it's this new era again. Um, and the, the good thing with the Stars is it's you feel like you're almost just at the beginning of, of mm-hmm. sort of this window, even with these veterans that are leaving. Um, but I think the stars just have a really good makeup and yeah, they've lost some pieces. Tanev, of course, hurt and, and Pavelski, but, um, uh, you know, Bork's going to make up for that and stanky a full season of him. So that, that's, that's my prediction. Curious uh, where you guys go. I know New York yeah. seems to be New York and Edmonton seems to be the popular pick. That's the only two teams I, I see everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, New York is mine. Okay. Yeah. I, I well, my actually, who do you do? Who did you pick? Who Dallas would be playing? I did it, New York. Actually, you did New York. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. my <laughs> final is uh, the Canucks and the Rangers. I love that one. Yeah. Um, and it's odd because Kyle and I not planned. Uh, our our Stanley Cup final picks are past Stanley Cup finals. I went with obviously Vancouver and the Rangers, and I have the Rangers winning the entire thing. And Kyle, I have the Avs taking on the New Jersey Devils and so, the Avs will be victorious. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. He went there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I, th- I feel like the Devils are a, a, a hot pick this year. Yeah, they too. have been. I guess just after having like a really disappointing year, they, yes. people just think they're going to pop all yes. of a sudden, <laughs> which yeah. I mean, hey, it can happen. <laughs> they were 2-0 um, for like a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Against um, the, you know, the Sabres, man. It wins over there in Prague. Oh, yeah. <laughs> over on uh, ESPN, I wanted to bring this up. They, 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 all of those, uh, it's so funny. Like they had uh, all of their hockey people pick, you know, the, the division winners. Okay. Um, and there's like 21 people here. I'm like, when do I see 21 people talking about hockey on ESPN? Yeah. That's it actually never happens. Yeah. That's impressive. Well, you do never, they throw the analysts in there? I, there's a lot of people. Yes. I mean, okay. Mark yeah. in here so maybe, yeah, maybe, okay, okay. So I, I get that, but <laughs> yeah. crazy. Anyway, for the central, um, 18 of these people picked the stars. Okay. Uh, four picked the avalanche and one picked Nashville. Okay. That's yeah. just to win the division. So yeah. I, I can't disagree with like, I, I, I think there's so, there's so many questions surrounding the avalanche. Um, it's tough to pick them to win the division. Because yeah. you have someone, a team like the Stars that are pretty well, you know, and you even talk about your goalie. Who's all, yeah, yeah. All yeah. World. You know should what be I mean? pretty good. Yeah, I think he's okay. <laughs> so I, I think it's pretty safe to say like Dallas should be in the front seat to win that division. I think they'll get pushed. I mean, it's hockey. It's a hockey yeah. season. They're going to get pushed. I don't think they'll run away with it. But um, if the questions that go the avalanche way are – in their favor, they'll push them even more. If they're not, oh, yeah. they might slide down to third again. You might get pushed by Nashville, but I think Dallas is kind of in the driver's seat here. Yeah, I mean the Stars will will have a slump at some point. Uh, you know, sure. every team Everyone every does. team yep. does, and it, it's hard to run away in the Central. And uh, you know, it, it feels like you can have a three game win streak and you don't make up any ground, and then you you lose one, and it feels like everybody's like all of a sudden right on, right on your your, your tail once again. Yep. I, th- I think that's just sort of the story with the, the Central and. You know, and maybe Nashville, they just got some energy and, and, and the motion, maybe the abs too, kind of for that, that two, three spot. Um, and, and, you know, I, the playoff format, I just, I don't like it. I wish yeah, I'm with you on that. it. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> not to, not to, not to get into to that at all, yeah. but yeah, I think, I think Dallas has to feel pretty good. And, and one of the reasons I, I almost feel good about the stars pick in a lot of way, my prediction is I feel like last few years, the stars were sort of a popular choice, especially in the playoffs. I felt like a lot of teams were on the stars last year. And yeah. It seems like maybe some of the, uh, some of the, the eye off of them now, it's all on Edmonton after what they did. So maybe, maybe that helps stars are, can maybe fly under the radar a little bit more. Not that, I mean, they always do. I mean, since we're in Texas, yeah. but <laughs> now, it's, now it's even more We back where we like to be. <laughs> no, it's a good point. Good and point. It, it's hard and it's hard to go wire to wire as a favorite, um, yeah. especially in this yeah. league. Like not, I mean, even the Boston Bruins setting a record for the best regular season, faltered in the playoffs so mm-hmm. it's one thing to have a successful regular season campaign 
but to carry it in the playoffs. And I'd like to see what the Stars could do with that added pressure because it's been about yeah. like 20 years since you've been getting this kind of clout around the Dallas Stars. So, yeah. yeah. Keep no, that chain away from us. Yeah, and I mean, the, the last season especially, there was a lot of that like comparison to the 99 Stars. Yep. Like you start thinking back like, oh, well, you know, this team has some similarities with, with the players. And um, yeah, they, they've seemed to embrace it, which is a good sign. They, they don't shy away from it. And I think that has to do with, uh, well, last year, I mean, you, the Stars had like four captains in their building. When you think of like Suter, like he was a captain someplace. Yeah. Ravelski was a captain. I mean, Sagan, a lot of other places probably would have been up there. Uh, not when he was younger, but, you know, he spent so much time in Dallas and the Jamie Benn. Like there's so many leaders there. Um, um, and those are huge, I think, in the locker room. And I think it's also helping the Stars young players like Stan yeah. Coven and Johnston, like uh, when they sort of usher in this this new era. So, yeah, I mean, I again, we all come back down to like, okay, like – what was what it going to be in April? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> is Otter going to show up? Can he have one of those runs again? Um, and can the offense, you know, figure it out for for more than two and a half series? Um, the, the kind of the Achilles heel, like, has been, of course, there's been some injuries, but, you know, every team gets injuries in the playoffs. Um, but the offense is really, really fluttered. Um, we saw it against Edmonds. We saw it against Vegas. Like, they just, they run out of, they run out of goals. Um, um, so Our special teams hurt too. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think I, I looked at this after the stars lost, but I, under Pete DeBoer, his previous stops, like special teams, like, like goes out the window, like the mm. further they get into the playoffs. Um, so um, hopefully that's not a trend that continues. Yeah. And you shouldn't. And especially where Pete DeBoer has been. I mean, San Jose had some good talent. I, I sure. mean, Dallas has, I mean, uh, you pick and choose who you want to play on your power play. So, you know, what's going on there? Is it, uh, is it coaching or is it like, you know, I hate to be like, well, the players just got to be better. Um, <laughs> you know, like, obviously, but yeah, yes, yeah, special teams is huge. It's playoff, I mean, God, it just changes the momentum constantly, especially now and day with the modern era. It's just, just penalties, yeah. wazoo. <laughs> you have to be able yeah. to score. That's an odd trend that uh, you don't want to continue. That That's yes. a weird one. I, I yeah. can't figure that one out. That's, well, and especially that's when they like they dominated series previously. Yeah. Um, and then just like, even the PK just like seems to not work. I mean, yeah, you go up against Connor McDavid like that. It's kind of yeah. going to give up. Wow. Some. <laughs> but, wow. That's true. No, but yeah, it's, it's a trend that it's like it just disappears. So hmm. uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully they, they figure it out. All right. All right, man. Well, uh, let's wrap this thing up. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we will be uh, chatting once or twice during uh, th this this regular mm -hmm. season. So it's 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 a hockey season. It's sure to be a good one. So uh, throw out where people can follow you, the show, anywhere else on social media. Absolutely. Um, I'm at Joy the Jet 19 um, on Twitter. You can see us uh, on Locked On Stars, uh, of course, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I look forward to, to catching up with you guys again. Maybe we'll have to do it here uh, I mean, a month before the, the first matchup. Maybe it'll be a battle for first place early Ooh, on in the season. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and Thanksgiving's always, a, a you know, that big kind of deadline, right? Like, are you yes, in the postseason? And I think, uh, I, I, all right. I hope the stars and abs are going to be fine at that point in the season. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Right. Hopefully no surprise firings or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, if you want to follow us uh, over on uh, Twitter, X, whatever it is now, uh, LOP and underscore avalanche. And that's also uh, locked on avalanche on Instagram as well. Kyle, where people can follow you at Shaggy Von Doom. There you go. So, all right. Enjoy uh, these games. Enjoy the season. Joey, appreciate you uh, jumping on here with us. Like we said, we'll definitely be doing this throughout the year. So uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated for Mr. Shaggy Von Doom and Mr. Joey Erickson. I am Chris Maselli. This is Locked On Avalanche and Locked On Stars. Enjoy the games, everybody.